The Nanobiointerface Center is a multidisciplinary research institute that brings together faculty from across the campus to address issues at the interface of physical and biological systems. The University of Pennsylvania is ideal for nanobiotechnology because we have all of the schools in the university co-located on the single campus. We focus on areas that impact technology sectors as wide-ranging as energy harvesting, biomedical uh, therapeutics, diagnostics, and environmental sensing. There are three scientific foci in the Nanobio Interface Center. Biomolecular optoelectronics, which is the design of proteins and putting them into devices. The other is the invention and innovation around measuring things at the nanometer scale. And the third one is molecular mechanics and motion. The most recent advances in protein motion are a few different experiments. One that we're really excited about that is just coming out in the Biophysical Journal has to do with the walking of myosin-5. This is a motor that's operating in the brain and immune cells. And the way it walks has been very puzzling up till now, but we were able to discover that the two arms of the myosin-5 molecule harness the nano environment that they're walking in in the cell and they fluctuate very dramatically and we're able to measure those fluctuations. That helps the molecule extend its reach and walk and carry cargoes in cells. Understanding molecular motors, the myosins, the other two classical ones are called kinesin and dynein. Each of those are associated with severe diseases and when we understand how they work better then eventually that leads to understanding their pathways and using them either for prevention or therapy. The Nanobio Interface Center facility, which is housed in the Singh Nanotechnology Center, contains 11 instrumentation platforms. This combination of capability is uh, not available anywhere else in the world. The facilities in the Nanobio Interface Center are enabling the ability to look at single molecules at a time and probe how they interact with their environment. This capability extends also to electronic materials. For example, the invention of a new kind of a measurement chamber in which you can look at the inside of a fuel cell in operation, see how the atoms are moving around inside an operating fuel cell. We have faculty across the campus who are inventing new probes to be able to measure things at nanometer scales. And these range from measuring optical dielectric function constants in single molecules to 3D motion of molecular motors. Heim Bau and his colleagues developed the Nano Aquarium that allows real-time imaging in a liquid inside an electron microscope. The researchers at the Nanobio Interface Center are advancing several frontiers that have impacts in technology. For example, there are two startup companies that have to do with electronics as they pertain to making biochemical sensors. What we're doing in our research is to take proteins and redesign them. Proteins are the chemical sensors of the natural world and we want to redesign them to serve our purposes. So we change them to be sensitive to compounds that we want. We change their properties so we can integrate them with our nano devices. We take these proteins and we couple them to carbon nanotube devices and graphene devices. And the protein recognizes the molecule that we're interested in and the graphene or the carbon nanotubes read out changes in that protein. We're very interested in applications that would let us detect chemicals in the air that might be uh, indicative of a problem maybe at a chemical plant. We're also interested in detecting chemicals that your body emits that might indicate that you have a disease. One of the great outcomes of our project in the NBIC has been the emergence of several startups that have come out through the work that we've done. We were interested in the science, but some of it looks like it might be good in the marketplace. This type of work attracts a student, I think, who's interested in many different areas. We really have people who enjoy learning new ideas from different departments, bringing those ideas together to do something new and hopefully something very exciting. We're very fortunate at Penn that we've established a number of linkages to international centers of excellence in nanoscience. So we have students here from Penn who can go overseas and do a summer project in the same way they can interact with students who come from Europe or Asia who come to Penn for the summer to work. I was able to do research at the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility in Grenoble, France. And that was part of a four-month exchange program with Minitech, which is a French research institute. There, I was able to exchange ideas with staff scientists as well as postdoctoral fellows. From that experience, actually, I now have a new collaboration uh, with the ESRF to study the structure of my nanomaterials in depth. The Nanobio Interface Center has sponsored a career and leadership development series. This is to help graduate students be prepared to work in the science and technology environment. It was really important to me that I be able to apply what I've learned in the lab to workplaces outside of academia. 
One of the great things about the Nano Bio Interface Center is that we really strive to reach out to the community. One of our big events is called Nano Day, in which we have high school students from around the community come in and we try to tell them about our jobs and about nanotechnology. I think it's really important because they're the next generation and if we can get them interested in science, we can basically solve the next generation of global problems.